doesn't matter how many sharp sticks you make. It doesn't matter how prepared you think we are. He doesn't care. What the fuck is that? have three different stories. We've had it to the point where we've almost been chased off. But all say they've either seen. I've never, ever been so terrified in my life. Or heard what they believe to be Bigfoot. I heard crazy, crazy noises. Scott Lucas says those sounds are coming from behind his home in Deering. And now he won't walk back there without his shotgun. I heard a noise that was so hideous and loud. And it was, it was not a cat. It was not a fish a cat. It was not a bobcat. It was loud and demonic. And, and at the end it went. Scott says the creatures have scared hunters off his property. Two tree stands have been left behind. His son Michael remembers seeing how scared the hunters were, and because he's seen Bigfoot himself, he understands why. This is a, a global phenomena, and it's right in our own backyard. Paul Bartholomew is a paranormal researcher. He studies the Bigfoot phenomena, which dates back to ancient times around the world. I think it's, it's something we should acknowledge and recognize, in that when someone has a sighting, that they should be able to come forward with their sighting and not have to, uh, you know, hide their sighting. There was no neck at all, absolutely no neck, and they were huge, furry, furry things, and I mean, you could see the fur, and the strides they took were amazing. It's just really weird because we don't know quite what to make of it. Both were contacted by Animal Planet's show series Finding Bigfoot. Scott and Michael showed up for a town hall meeting last year in the North Country to discuss their Bigfoot encounters, and they weren't alone. 500 people in New Hampshire, these were all regular people that said, oh, yeah, I saw it. Michael Eastman lives in Berlin and first saw Bigfoot back in 1973. It's the first time that I've not ever been able to breathe. I kept hyperventilating. I couldn't catch my breath. I just kept going. <laughs> From there, for me, it was never a question of, are they out there? I, now I knew that they were out there. For the past nine months, he's been studying their every move. Pretty much any range that I've ever been in, um, I've come across either signs of them or the actual beings themselves. I know that they're real. I mean, I've, I've got things that they've touched. He has several photos of their markings in the woods. Um, they'll twist the tree and then they apply pressure to it, pushing down on it, and it causes all these stress fractures. He has a hair sample and 17 hours of audio. He puts voice recorders inside these painted paper containers to camouflage them. He says Bigfoot talks in a click-pop language. He's recorded them during the day and at night. Your wife's a Bigfoot, isn't she, Gus? Because <laughs> I walk up, I say, hello, it's good to meet you. My name is Vernon. And she said, hello, I'm Bunny. Goony Goo Goo. <laughs> what the fuck does Goony Goo Goo mean, Gus? kind of shook me up a little bit. Never heard anything like that. I'm going to say this once. I'm going to say it simple. And I hope to God, for your sakes, you all listen. There are no abominable snowmen. There are no Sasquatches. There are no big feet. Told I'm on drugs. Uh, I'm just totally back crap crazy. But I've got thick skin. I know that I want to go out and help these people that have had these encounters. And McDonald promises he will continue to search and hunt until he can prove that Bigfoot is real. That was crazy. Where was that? It was a huge animal. But it just sat there and just kind of looked at us, swaying back and forth, and it finally stepped behind a tree and it was gone. Am I missing something? Well, my name is Jeff Meldrum, and I'm a professor of anatomy and anthropology at Idaho State University. Uh, Bigfoot, or also known as Sasquatch, is, uh, in my opinion, uh, a relic species of, uh, of large-bodied hominoid. 
there's a variety of uh, opinions as to what its nature is, and I, I think those will ultimately be resolved once the, the species is, is studied and identified. Bigfoots, Yetis, whatever you want to call them, Sasquatches, man of the woods, the ape man. Yeah, we get kind of aggravated and bored sometimes because we can't get nowhere with our material. Well, people won't believe you. I've sent stuff into Discovery Channel, I've sent stuff into uh, Current Affairs, I've sent stuff into National Geographic. I don't get no reply back. I know what's in these woods, and they're in these woods right here. There's probably over 100, 150 pictures, stills and regular snapshots of Bigfoot that we have. And right here is my black Bigfoot, right there. It is a Bigfoot. It's in the Wayne National Forest in the swamp area. See this? All of them are Bigfoot sitting here. You see them? You see their heads? I don't have it. Here you have them on them. Knock the TV. Woo! Hey, stick around, because when we come back, we're going to find us a big foot. What? My working hypothesis, my null hypothesis, is that we're dealing with a, a very large um, uh, terrestrial and, in this case, bipedal primate species that um, you know, only resembles us superficially in its habit of, of walking on two legs. It could be a nuisance animal that's coming up and scaring people, beating them their houses, killing their dogs, uh, their livestock. We know people who have lost uh, cows. <laughs> several, several encounters. I had one rush me. Another good hot spot area over here, southwest of Meridian, south of Forest. Well, I grew up in the Pacific Northwest, and, and as such, I, I uh, was aware of the of the traditions and the stories, the lore surrounding Bigfoot or Sasquatch. And, uh, but it wasn't until uh, 1996 when, as a professional uh, anthropologist and biologist, I was brought up face to face with a, a long line of, of very impressive footprints. And the, uh, the persuasiveness of, of that uh, trace evidence was what really set the hook and, and motivated me to uh, pursue, to look into this, into this mystery, into this question more fully. Look how large this footprint is. It's huge. It's big. It's a big foot. You get uh, it? The, the prospect of there being an, an unknown, a mysterious, legendary ape that resembled us in the, its habit of walking on two legs uh, raised all kinds of interesting questions as to what its relationship to the human family is and, uh, and how it might have uh, played a role in our own prehistory. Well, I'm often asked why I believe in Bigfoot, and, and my response is that I don't. For me, belief and especially in, in uh, everyday usage, connotes a position of faith, one where an individual holds a conviction in the absence of evidence, whereas it, as a scientist, it is the evidence that convinces me, that compels me to pursue the question. On the basis of that evidence, I'm quite convinced that it, there's a very high probability that some as yet unrecognized species of primate exists in the mountainous forests of the western United States and Canada. Frank Sysensky has dedicated his retired life to the study. I, I set up a game camera on my apple tree because I wanted to find out what was eating all the apples on my apple tree. And I set it up for a week. And when I took it down, this is the first thing that we saw on our computer. And both my wife and I said, what in the world is that? Sysensky says he went to Vermont's head biologist to get more information on the creature in the photo. I showed him this picture and he said it was an owl. But I don't think owls go 500 pounds. The accumulating evidence, short of the definitive type specimen, the body or bone or uh, some piece of evidence that irrefutably establishes the existence of an unknown species, short of that, I think the evidence continues to mount in a very compelling way that, that there, there is a, a population of very rare and elusive uh, relic primates here in North America. Well, as a, as a large hominoid, or a, a member of the superfamily Hominoidea, which includes us and all the, the other apes, the other great apes, uh, Sasquatch looks, uh, well, the simplest way to put it, would it, it looks kind of, to me, it looks like a, a gorilla with long legs. It has uh, that massive body build. It has um, uh, the deep-set jaws of a, of a uh, primate adapted to what we call durophagy. That is, they, they feed on rather tough uh, hard objects uh, out in the environment. This mythological beast was engineered by the French. Fuck, I was so blind 
to not see it before. It was designed by the French in the early 50s to kill American people. What? Well, skeptics who compare the uh, the search for Sasquatch or Bigfoot uh, to uh, looking for the Tooth Fairy or the Easter Bunny has been a popular one around here. Um, Honestly, I actually have very little to say to them <laughs> because their their position, their pronouncements, uh, uh, all too clearly reveal their um, unwillingness to be objective and open-minded in the consideration of the evidence. I find that those who are the most dogmatic in their opinions are usually the least informed, and that's typically the case of the of the ideological skeptics. Skepticism is is one thread in the tapestry of science, or you might say one one key on the keyboard of a piano. And if all you do is pound that one key, or you pull on one piece of thread in the fabric, you'll spoil you'll spoil the tapestry. Um, I approach the subject as objectively and as, as skeptically as, as is reasonable under the circumstances and uh, you know I've never uh, professed to accept the existence of this creature on the basis of uh, inconclusive evidence. Debunking the Payson Bigfoot sighting. A video shot near Payson allegedly shows a Sasquatch walking through the forest. But Bigfoot enthusiasts, including a professor of anatomy at Idaho State University, say the Payson video has some major red flags. Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum has been tracking Bigfoot for 20 years. He believes the top-level predator is very real. But he doesn't believe the video shot near Payson is real. Fox 13's Matt McDonald shows us why. Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum studies footprints. The hook was really set for me as far as my research interest in, in 1996 when I witnessed some, some tracks in uh, southeastern Washington. These are the prints he saw. And you could say he's been on Bigfoot's track ever since. This is an example of a footprint that was cast in uh, 1964. On Monday, this video surfaced of a possible Bigfoot sighting near Payson. Freeze it right here. The face is very shiny and the edge between that shiny face and the surrounding hair is very, very sharp, which smacks of a, a, a cheap, fabricated costume. Other red flags for Meldrum? The way the creature moves, the fact that it took a year for this video to surface, and the lack of any other evidence, like pictures of footprints left behind. There's no place you're going to go find a, a Bigfoot community. They're all just passing through uh, from, from Logan, clear across the tops of the mountains, clear down into Provo, which is where that one was, and uh, down in through Payson. Dave Carver has been interviewing Bigfoot witnesses in Utah for years. On the Payson video? It could easily be real. Uh, it could easily uh, not be real. But I don't want to call people fakers because if you do that enough, then nobody will send you information and pretty soon you'll lose real things. He is also questioning the lack of supporting evidence, but he's not questioning his own beliefs. I know what I know. I know what I've seen and I don't need any more. It's these bipeds, these unknown bipeds, are as real as can be. I'm convinced these creatures, uh, while they uh, very likely exist, are extremely rare. They're large animals, top predators, so there just aren't that many of them out there in, in the environment. With 250 casts from footprints like this in his office, Meldrum believes the legend is real. Guys, are people really going to think this is real? People will believe it is real if you make them believe it is real. So put the head on, walk and swing your arms, and act like you're extinct. Yeah! 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 yeah. Okay. One of the most um, prolific forms of evidence is that of eyewitness testimony. Now, eyewitness testimony has a certain uh, uh, weaknesses, obviously. We're at the mercy of both the integrity of the observer and, and their uh, forthrightness, but also their powers of observation and interpretation. How much experience do they have observing wildlife and distinguishing what it is they're seeing? Now, boys, this sounds a lot like the time you called to tell me you saw a dragon in the bathroom at Long John Silver's. I ain't huffed gas in over four years. This was real. Uh, but when it's corroborated with physical and trace evidence in the form of footprints or hair samples or recordings of vocalizations that are otherwise inexplicable, then it's pretty hard to so easily discount them based on some preconception of what can or cannot exist out there in the, in the wilderness.
It doesn't matter how fast you think you can run, and it doesn't matter how many sharp sticks you make, and it doesn't matter how prepared you think we are, he doesn't care. What the fuck is that? They have three different stories. We've had it to the point where we've almost been chased off. But all say they've either seen... I've never, ever been so terrified in my life. ...or heard what they believe to be Bigfoot. I've heard crazy, crazy noises. Scott Lucas says those sounds are coming from behind his home in Deering. And now he won't walk back there without his shotgun. I heard a noise that was so hideous and loud and... It was, it was not a cat, it was not a fish a cat, it was not a bobcat, it was loud and demonic. And, and at the end it went... Scott says the creatures have scared hunters off his property. Two tree stands have been left behind. His son Michael remembers seeing how scared the hunters were, and because he's seen Bigfoot himself, he understands why. This is a, a global phenomena, and it's right in our own backyard. Paul Bartholomew is a paranormal researcher. He studies the Bigfoot phenomena, which dates back to ancient times around the world. I think it's, it's something we should acknowledge and recognize, in that when someone has a sighting, that they should be able to come forward with their sighting and not have to, uh, you know, hide their sighting. There was no neck at all, absolutely no neck, and they were huge, furry, furry things, and I mean, you could see the fur, and the strides they took were amazing. It's just really weird because we don't know quite what to make of it. 